American Sorghum reports that over the last 50 years, sorghum consumption has declined by 52%, while wheat, corn, and soybeans' importance in global diets grew significantly. Dr. David Holding, a UNL associate professor of plant molecular genetics, says one of the reasons for the sorghum decline is the lack of protein in sorghum grain. To solve this problem, CRISPR, a new gene editing technology, is being used to enhance the nutritional value of sorghum and improve the digestibility of the protein. We sat down with Dr. Holding at the 2018 Growing Our Futures conference to learn more about this new technology and how it could help improve grain sorghum. Sorghum is a, is a crop that grows very well under limited um, irrigation conditions. So in, in summers where we have very hot conditions, so, sorghum is often a very good option for, for growing in dry land environments. In summers like um, 2012, um, sorghum w was performing very well and became a viable um, option com compared with corn. And it just does much better under limited or no irrigation con um, conditions. Sorghum may be a great crop for hot and dry weather conditions. However, according to David, sorghum produces a lower yield when compared to corn and its grain only contains about 10% protein. Sorghum's protein is deficient in lysine, which is an essential amino acid needed for the diets of humans and monogastric livestock such as pigs and chickens. Okay, so the proteins that accumulate in, in grains such as corn and sorghum um, are deficient in lysine because they have a preponderance of the so-called uh, prolamin storage proteins. Those dominate the proteins. So if we can reduce the, uh, the amount of those proteins, then we can increase the amount of other proteins that collectively have a better amino acid balance and make that grain more nutritionally complete uh, as a food. In order to create a better amino acid balance in sorghum, David is using the strategy called CRISPR. The game-changing aspect of CRISPR with respect to crop biotechnology is that we can make those gene edits and then we can go in and remove that transgene just with a simple cross. So in the process of breeding that crop, we can cross it to whatever germplasm we want our trait to be in and in the process select against the transgene. So we have a genetically engineered, if you like, crop without a transgene. So this is, this is attractive because it it makes the regulatory process that you have to go through with a genetically engineered crop much less stringent. Um, and you, so you're ending up with something that you have, you've changed a gene, but is not genetically, is not, doesn't meet the definition of genetically modified. According to a statement issued on March 28th by the U.S. Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny Perdue, the U.S. Department of Agriculture will not regulate or plan on regulating plants that undergo gene editing techniques such as CRISPR. Therefore, plant varieties can undergo changes such as a genetic deletion of any size, single base pair substitutions, insertions from compatible plant relatives, and complete null segregants. We have been um, using CRISPR to, to target the prolamin storage proteins. And the, the way we have innovated this is that we've used it to target not just a single gene, but the whole of the, of the prolamin um, family, if you like. Um, the reason we were able to do this is because that family ha have a very similar DNA sequence. And we, by choosing the most similar sequence, we could target using a, a so-called consensus guide RNA. We could target that whole family for partial shutdown, and this is key, this is critical. We did not want to create a sorghum line that had no prolamins. We wanted to just to subtly reduce them so that we still have good hard seeds, but we have lower levels of prolamins, increased levels of non-prolamins, which collectively have higher lysine, thereby increasing the lysine and increasing the digestibility. And so we have proof of concept of this. We have several lines which still have the transgene that causes the edits in there, we're in the, in the process of outcrossing those to get rid of that transgene. So it's bringing sorghum into the level of being a complete protein. What I mean by complete protein is that it has all of the essential amino acids present in the amount that you could, in theory, eat that grain and not need a, another high-class protein source. Although gene editing can be used to protect crops from droughts and diseases along with eliminating allergens, the goal of David's research is to enhance the nutritional value of sorghum and improve the digestibility of sorghum proteins through gene editing. 
my take on this is this is not making sorghum um, a better crop in terms of its heat and resilience and, and water use and nitrogen use efficiency. Sorghum already has that, okay? We're, what we need is ways to make sorghum more attractive in the end product. So one of the things about, about sorghum is uh, um, this, is a, this is an alternative grain to wheat and uh, we, everybody has heard of uh, increasing prevalence or at least awareness of gluten intolerance, be it celiac uh, disease or celiac independent gluten intolerance. So the more sources of, non, of, of, grain, of whole grain that we have that do not have glutens, um, the better we are. And, and so there's a, there are a number of opportunities for increasing the use of sorghum for human food um, sources, uh, but also um, the US and including Nebraska is a major exporter of sorghum. So this is potentially viable for um, exporting to you know, Africa and other, other countries, um, um, India for example, um, for, for uses for human consumption. Mm -hmm.